I have an Associates of Applied Science in photography. And one day, back in Studio Lighting 1, we got in a big argument with our professor, Eric Sonner. He was a great still life and studio photographer. He understands light and modified light and artificial light so well. We were doing a, an assignment review. We've all, we're all putting our photos up on the screen. He's discussing our use of whatever technique it was that we were learning at that particular lesson. Most of us in the class were pretty dead set on using natural light only. I didn't like talking about ratios. I didn't like talking about middle gray. I didn't like talking about proper exposure. I, did, I thought that it was all, it's, this is all subjective. Art is subjective. So why do I need to know any of this if I'm just gonna go out there and be a great photographer? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna use natural light. I'm gonna snap photos and I'm gonna be a phenomenal world-renowned photographer just because of my eye. <laughs> Our professor was squashing all of us. He felt that none of us were using the technique we were supposed to be learning. We all felt like our, our, our artistic eye was being squashed. We felt like we weren't being given a chance to, to be creative. My professor said something that's, that stuck with me, something that I think about every day. In this class, I want you to learn the rules because the best art breaks the rules. So I'm reading through Rick Rubin's The Creative Act, A Way of Being. This is from page 100. Often the most innovative ideas come from those who master the rules to such a degree that they can see past them or from those who never learned them at all. Rules direct us to average behaviors. If we're aiming to create works that are exceptional, most rules don't apply. Average is nothing to aspire to. The goal is not to fit in. If anything, it's to amplify the differences, what doesn't fit, the special characteristics unique to how you see the world. The artists who define each generation are generally the ones who live outside of those boundaries, not the artists who embody the beliefs and conventions of their time, but the ones who transcends them. Art is confrontational. This book is echoing many of the truths that I experienced in art school. Sadly, they're truths that I didn't experience directly. I could have experienced them directly if I had an open mind and if I listened, but I was 18. I was so sure of my eye and my taste. I didn't need these rules. These rules don't apply. Now that's the point. The rules are important because it sets the stage for something phenomenal. The rules in photography that you learn in school, if you, if you pay to go to school, or if you take courses online, or if you just go to the school of YouTube, you'll learn all these rules that have been established based on objective understandings about how art is typically interpreted by the masses. And if you learn all these rules and then you break one of them, or you break a couple of them at one time and you can tell me what rules you broke and why, that's fascinating. <laughs> now I'm going back and I'm searching for videos on YouTube to relearn stuff that I paid to learn in, in college. I do keep up with that professor and I have since shared with him my experience in this field, shooting shiny reflective products and, and asked him follow-up questions about stuff that I should have learned in his classes, but because I was so busy arguing, I didn't pick up on what he was teaching. We're making art, it's supposed to be fun, but learn the rules so that when you break a rule, it's meaningful, it's intentional. 